Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to Maddie's Nutrition Mailbag. It's 1230. I'm going to give it a minute for people to jump on. Today's topics. I had a question about pre and post workout snacking or meals. Um, and then we're going to talk about, we're going to go through the nutrition facts label and I'm going to kind of, um, go through what's important, what to look for, um, and kind of how to decode it. Cause it can be pretty overwhelming sometimes looking at the nutrition facts label, but once you get into the habit of it, and once you kind of understand what you're, what you're looking at, um, it can be a really valuable tool. So this is a Kashi, uh, granola. Pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome for those of you who are watching. Um, so the first, so my the first question, the question of the day is, what should I have for pre and post workout snacking? Um, you want to be having some sort of protein and carbohydrate, um, you know, before and after your meals, or before and after working out. Excuse me. So for your pre-workout nutrition, um, you want to be eating, you know, at least one to two hours before you're working out, um, just for adequate recovery um, and fuel for your for your exercise. Um, so having some sort of protein and carbohydrate, and I'll give you some examples of some some good snacks. Um, if you're eating right before you're exercising, um, then have something that's more carb heavy, um, preferably low fiber, because because when you, if you eat like a high fiber meal right before you exercise, it can lead to some GI upset. So like a quick carbohydrate. So like that could be like a banana or like a piece of like an apple, piece of fruit, um, a rice cake, maybe a piece of toast, um, some crackers. So like an easy carbohydrate that will provide you with some quick energy if you're having something right before you work out. And then for post-workout nutrition, you want to have something, you know, shortly after you exercise. You want to be having some protein for muscle repair, um, especially if you're doing some strength training, as well as some carbohydrates to replenish your glycogen stores, which is like your storage form of um, carbohydrates. Um, you store that in your muscles um, when you need energy just throughout the day. So some, some good ideas of pre and post-workout snack ideas that contain both protein and carbohydrates. Hi, Carrie. How are you? I miss you. I hope you're doing well. Um, some snack ideas could be like my personal favorite is like a piece of toast with some avocado on it and an egg. So you've got your carbs from your toast, your, your protein from your egg, some healthy fats from your avocado. Um, some low fat chocolate milk is really good too. You got those quick, easy to digest carbs that are going to give you some quick energy. And then you got some protein from the, the milk. You could do a smoothie with milk and fruit, um, a banana or, or apple with peanut butter. Also one of my favorites. Um, oatmeal with peanut butter is great. Yogurt with some granola, like something like this with fruit, um, hummus with, um, you know, some veggie sticks, trail mix. I also like to do like make a little tuna salad for protein and top it on crackers. Um, if you're doing a meal, you could do like salmon with brown rice or chicken with sweet potato. Um, so those are just some, some some good ideas. Just think a carbohydrate food with a protein food um, and you're good to go with, with your pre and post workout nutrition. It's so important to be eating something after you work out as well. And if you're getting up in the morning um, and you're, you're going to go do a workout class and you're not feeling too hungry, you know, for breakfast, have a little something, you know, just something that's going to give you some good energy um, for your exercise. And then maybe have like your full breakfast um, after your, your exercise. So we're going to get into the topic of the day, which is kind of decoding or breaking down the nutrition facts label. Um, I'm going to go through the nutrition facts label on this granola here, um, this Kashi Go um, coconut almond crunch granola. I love this on my, on my yogurt or just as is with milk, whatever. Um, so the first thing that we're just going to kind of go down and talk about all the different labels on here. And somebody comment below if you can't see it very well but I will um, kind of do my best to like zoom in on, on, on um, the, the label. So 
when you're looking at the nutrition facts label, the first thing that you're going to see is the serving size. Um, so this is just, just, this is just the recommendation. The, the nutrition facts label is based on like, it's, it's so generalized. It doesn't, it, it really only applies to a small amount of us. So it should just be used as a general recommendation. It's based on the needs of um, like a, a male adult, I think, um, who needs like 2000 calories a day. Obviously we're not all male adults um, at health. So we don't all need, you know, 2000 calories. So just take it as a Take that with a grain of salt. Serving size, two thirds of a cup. Um, you wanna look at the number of servings that are in a container. So sometimes if you get like one of those big size Gatorades, that's like, I don't know, bigger than like your, the skinny ones, um, those are gonna have, it's, so the nutrition facts label is gonna say that there's, it's gonna be based off of one serving, but oftentimes you'll see that on those big bottles of Gatorade that there's like two, two and a half servings. That means that you have to multi, if you're going to drink that whole bottle of Gatorade, you have to multiply all of these by 2.5. If you're having, um, this is two thirds of a cup. If you're going to double that, then everything here is doubled. So if you're having one and a half cups, everything here is doubled. Um, so calories are next. Um, they're, they've recently been changed the nutrition facts label. So calories are in bold now and they're the biggest number. But I really want to emphasize that calories are, are a small part of the bigger picture. Um, you know, your needs, like I said, depend on your age, your gender, your weight, your physical activity, um, your metabolism. Lower calorie foods don't necessarily mean healthier foods. Like if you think of like the thousand calorie packs of Oreos, yes, those are lower in calories, but the Oreos themselves are not healthy or not nutrient dense. Or if you think of like diet sodas, like yes, those those don't have any calories, but those are also aren't nutrient dense. Um, and then the same goes for high calorie foods. So high calorie foods aren't necessarily unhealthy for you. So like think of peanut butter or nuts or avocado or olive oil. Those are all super nutrient dense foods that are good for you. And they're also very calorie dense. They're, they're rather high in calories. So, so it, the calories is just a small part of the whole picture. Um, so next we're going to look at the total fat here. So um, with the total, with the fat label, you want to look at the, hi mom, hi Jay, hi mom. You want to look at the subcategories. So the total fat, don't focus on that as much. Focus more on the, the quality of the fats. So the first one listed here is saturated fat. Um, this is a fat that you kind of want to limit. Um, it's found in red meat. It's found in butter. Um, whole milk dairy, too much of it can increase your, your unhealthy cholesterol. Um, next is trans fats. Um, these are, you know, the worst kind of fats. You really want to avoid these at, if all possible. These decrease your, your good cholesterol and increase your bad cholesterol. The healthy fats are your unsaturated fats. So your polyunsaturated and your monounsaturated fats. These ones are good for you. These help your, your um, good cholesterol, they increase your HDL cholesterol. So when you're looking at the nutrition facts label, don't focus just on total fat, take a peek at saturated, trans, and the unsaturated fat. You want your unsaturated fats to be, you want there to be unsaturated fats and less trans and, sa and saturated fats. Next is cholesterol. Um, a lot of people think that dietary cholesterol is equivalent to blood cholesterol. So a lot of people think that if they have high cholesterol, then they need to be um, limiting the amount of cholesterol that they're eating. When in fact, um, cholesterol doesn't, dietary cholesterol doesn't significantly affect blood cholesterol, much like the fat that we eat doesn't directly translate to the fat on our body. Um, the less cholesterol that we eat, the more that our liver makes, the more cholesterol that we eat, the less that our liver makes. So our body usually can kind of regulate it. Um, so yeah, that's my spiel on cholesterol. The next thing is sodium right here. Most of us get too much sodium in our diet. Um, that can lead to high blood pressure. That can lead to um, kidney issues. Um, so sodium can be found. Most of us who do get too much salt, um, we're not getting it from like just the salt shaker. We're getting it from 
the types of foods that we're eating. So like processed foods are big culprits of, of lots of sodium, as well as canned soups. You can get a lower sodium option. Um, deli meats, fast foods, um, frozen and processed meals, um, and like salty processed snacks. So keep an eye out for that. Um, this is rather low in sodium, only 125 milligrams um, in a serving. The recommendation is no more um, than 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. Next is carbohydrates. So similar to the fats, don't focus um, on the total carbohydrates, but rather the subcategories that fall underneath total, total carbohydrates. Again, there's carbohydrates kind of get a bad rap for whatever reason. Um, we need carbohydrates. They're the main source of energy for our bodies and our brains. Foods that are rich in carbohydrates also tend to be rich in um, fiber, vitamins, minerals. Most of us don't get enough fiber. Um, so, you know, low carbohydrate foods don't necessarily mean healthy. High carbohydrate foods don't necessarily mean unhealthy. Um, so looking at the subcategories, you want to, you do want to look at fiber. So like I said, most of us don't get enough fiber in our diet. So looking at fiber, seeing if this is a, um, this is pretty good for fiber. Um, women need about 28 grams. Men need about um, 35, I think. <laughs> um, so this gives us a good amount of fiber because it's cont it contains whole grains. So whole grains, fruits, vegetables, plant foods in general um, can give us some good fiber. And then the sugars. Total sugars are here. Underneath it are added sugars. So um, added sugars are sugars that are added into the food during processing. They're not naturally occurring. So you can see here on this cereal that there are nine grams of added, um, sorry, excuse me, nine grams of total sugars, seven grams of added sugars. That means there's seven grams of added sugars and the other two grams that make up the total nine grams are naturally occurring. So um, look at those added sugars. Um, Again, those are sugars that are added in during processing just to sweeten um, the food or to help with, you know, a baked product, helping with the texture. Um, these sugars don't give us any sort of other nutrients. They give us some, you know, simple carbohydrates, but added sugars um, don't give us any other vitamins and minerals, really. They just give us, tend to give us an um, excess of calories. So you want to try to keep those low. So keep the added sugars low, keep the fiber high. Um, so this label has seven grams of added sugars. One teaspoon of sugar contains four grams of sugar um, or is equivalent to four grams of sugar. So this product contains 2.25 teaspoons of added sugar in a serving. Again, if you were to have two servings, it would be 4.5 uh, um, teaspoons of sugar, added sugar. Next is protein here. Most of us in the United States get enough protein. Um, a lot of us, um, as long as we're not malnourished, we're, we're getting plenty of protein. Um, so I recommend, or the recommendation for protein is just to get your, your protein from a variety of sources, from seafood, from plant-based foods, such as beans, nuts, seeds, tofu, um, lean, lean um, poultry, like chicken or turkey, and dairy products, so your cheese, your yogurt, as well as eggs. So when you're getting your protein from a variety of sources, you're getting all the different amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. You're getting a variety of amino acids from those different sources of protein. Lastly uh, are the, um, the vitamins and minerals. So the first four here, vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium, those are shown on every Nutrition Facts label because these are the vitamins and minerals that um, Americans are most or at highest risk of being deficient in. So vitamin D, those are found in animal products. Um, and so like your, your dairy products, they're found in um, mushrooms as well. Um, they, so uh, not a ton of foods contain vitamin D. We get it from the sun, but you know, in New England in winter, we're not getting a lot of sun. So a lot of us do tend to be deficient in it. Um, and then calcium is next. So that's found in dairy. That's found in some soy products. That's found in dark leafy greens um, and nuts as well. So this has a little bit of calcium in it, 
likely from there's some soy flakes in this for protein um, and then some some almonds so it's get get we're getting a little bit of vitamin um, I'm sorry calcium from there iron as well that's found in nuts meat beans whole grains and then your dark leafy vegetables as well like kale spinach um, and then potassium is the last one um, this contains 410 milligrams of potassium, so 8% of your recommended daily value. We get potassium from um, fruits and vegetables in general. Most fruits and vegetables contain a, a, a significant source of potassium. Lastly, you're, when you're looking at the ingredients list here, you, if you guys can see, pretty recognizable ingredients here. Um, their ingredients are listed by uh, quantity. So the first ingredient, so soy flakes here, is the is contributing the the most um, the highest amount. So soy flakes first, and then the least amount is rosemary extract for freshness. I think that says. Um, I say you know the fewer the ingredients, the better. Um, if you have an ingredient list that's like goes on forever with ingredients that you can't really recognize, that should be a little bit of a red flag. Um, I, I kind of look for ingredients that I can recognize and for, you know, a short ingredient list. This has soy flakes, whole grain oats, brown rice syrup, cane sugar, coconut, puffed millet, oat fiber, canola oil, almonds, puffed brown rice, sea salt, natural flavor, rosemary extract. So those are all ingredients that I recognize. It's pretty short. Um, so I kind of know what I'm putting, putting in my body. Um, I also say, you know, ingredient quality over calorie quantity. So again, calorie is a small part of the whole picture. Something that's low in calories doesn't, something might be low in calories and have like an extensive ingredients list of, of words that you don't recognize. Whereas something could be high in calories and have, you know, one ingredient, peanuts in peanut butter. And I say, you know, that's a healthier option than, than the other. Um, so that is my spiel for you today on going through the nutrition facts label. Just really quick to recap, um, looking at the fat quality over the quantity. So um, looking to keep saturated and trans fat low, looking to keep those, those two unsaturated fats high, looking to keep sodium low. You want your fiber to be high, your sugars to be low, and aim for you know high amounts of these top four um, vitamins and minerals that we're most likely to um, or we're at higher risk of being deficient in. So that's my, that's my um, whole spiel. As always, if anybody, you know, has a, a, to a certain topic that they want me to cover or um, has any, you know, nutrition questions that they want me to cover in the next video, you can shoot me an email. You can uh, message me on Facebook. I will be back here next Friday, July. I can't believe it's already July, July 10th. I hope everybody has a wonderful and relaxing 4th of July weekend. And I, the YMCAs are opening up on Monday or starting to. And so I'm hoping that we're on our way to, to seeing each other in person again. But for now, I'm still here for you. Um, like I said, you know, you can call into my office hours. I'll post my um information for my office hours right after i end this video so you're welcome to call in and just do a little wellness check-in just say hi ask me your nutrition questions um i'm still doing nutrition coaching so we can do nutrition coaching over the phone if that's something that you're interested in i have my newsletter that i send out every week um, so drop your email below if you want me to add you to that and that's everything from me i hope you all have a wonderful weekend and i'll see you next week Bye-bye.